Agriculture accounts for roughly 3% of lending to the private sector here in Kenya. And lending to the sector has been pretty rocky, contracted by 6.1% in the year to November. And the overall portfolio has actually contracted by 16% in the three years in which Kenya's government imposed price controls on retail interest rates. Now, most commercial banks are historically very averse to this sector, but not all of them are. Earlier on, I spoke to the CEO of Stanvik Bank. I started by asking him why he doesn't expect to make large provisions for non-performing loans in agriculture this year, despite three years of inclement weather and the worst locust invasion that Kenya has had in about seven decades. There are three parts to agriculture. There is the part which has to deal with the plantation crops. So if you look at the people who are in tea, who are in coffee, the rains we got towards the end of the year into January were actually good for them because it actually means that you've got higher yield and better quality and distress is actually, is, is actually not there. So they were quite happy with that scenario and we, we heavily invested in tea. Yeah. So, so, so we, we're quite comfortable with that. Then you've got the second group of people who are in the grain, cereals, food production area. Those, of course, got a disruption because you're no longer sure what the season will look like. And there's a bit of, some of the early crop, of course, got despoiled because we're not expecting rains in, in January. So that could have an impact in terms of that. Then the third bucket is your floriculture. Because I think sometimes we tend to forget that that's a big thing. Yep. And, and floriculture also came out right. So, so if you look at it, agriculture actually had a very good season. Because of the kind of crops that you're essentially lending into, you have a sort of natural hedge yes, uh, against the uh, desert locust yes, problem. Yes, because for us, we're largely heavily invested in tea, coffee, mm -hmm. and a lot of floriculture. From your perspective as a bank, how do you approach the question of, of, of climate mitigation, or at least trying to ensure against um, unforeseen weather disasters? Because these tend to become more and more common. 2017, for instance, yeah. we had this insane drought, the yeah. likes of which you've not seen in decades. Mm -hmm. Following year, torrential mm -hmm. rains. 2019 comes mm -hmm. along and the rain patterns are all over the place. Yes. I mean, if you're lending into a space that's heavily dependent on weather like that, I mean, how do you hedge your books? Um, I think the starting point is to understand the cycles. So we spend a lot of time understanding the cycles. One of my most uh, intense debates with my economist around are we going to have a drought or not and, <laughs> and, and I think you remember saying yeah. is, is it delayed rain or is it going to be so we have to spend a lot of time understanding the cycles of those, of those crops. Mm -hmm. um, the second part is to understand not just the cycles of the crops but also to understand each individual farmer and their own circumstances, how they plan to deal with each of those calamities should they arise. And, and your, 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 your <coughs> insurance brokerage side, I mean, they've had a fantastic year as well. And they've focused on embedding products yes. across the board too. Yes. So when you're lending into agriculture, do you also embed crop insurance into that? Yes, we do embed some of those products, yes. Mm. That's part of the... So you build in your insurance, you understand the, the mitigations that you need to do that. You spend a lot of time understanding what the weather looks like. Mm. I mean, the whole aspect of it is that lending into agriculture and being in agriculture, you also have to think like farmers and be farmers. Mm -hmm. You can't just come in as bankers, you have to become farmers. And that's what we're very good at. Looking at it from a different perspective, incomes have been stagnant for mm -hmm. quite a while. Mm -hmm. Businesses have been struggling with mm -hmm. cash flow problems. How strong really is demand for credit in this kind of economy? I, th I think there is, we can't say demand actually shrunk. In some way, the formal demand from the, through the banking sector, remember, took a knock. Mm -hmm. So we saw a private sector extension of credit, I mean, hovering around 3 4%. Yeah, for real. Uh, for, for real, yeah. But what we also didn't, what we were not factoring is the fact that we also saw a lot of, uh, if I want to call it informal sector and digital lending, those numbers going up. Mm -hmm. So in a way, some of that was substituted through that process. But it was, a, it was a relatively small part it, of the book. It is small, but this is on the small, on the, if you want to call it on the SME individual mm -hmm. side. On the corporate side, I think it pretty much remained flat. Mm -hmm. so, so I suppose the challenge you now have is how do we kickstart that demand mm -hmm. and what do we need to do to do that? Mm -hmm. And I think part of the central bank strategy, if you notice, has been to reduce the CBR rate. I think, you know, we've seen a cut early this year. Yeah. And I think they're expecting that there'll be further cuts. So, so the expectation is that we trying to spare up that demand and create a new demand into the market. Just for argument's sake, assuming that the central bank continues on mm. that rate cutting yes. path, but at the same time we've removed rate caps, yes. so we might go back, for argument's sake, to to use one of your peers' uh, numbers, 16 mm. percent uh, okay. lending rates. Uh, would that still be enough to jumpstart that demand as you as you expect it to be? Well, yes and no, 
because interest rates are only one side of the story. You still have a whole lot of other dimensions that also have to be dealt with in terms of what actually happens. I mean, there's been a lot of discussion around government paying up some of the areas that they have with the with private sector. So yeah. that also has to come into play. And I think we've seen a lot of movement and traction. I think the president made an announcement earlier on that they will try and clear those. And we've seen some movement around that. Mm -hmm.